complete guide for the design and execution of an A-frame is a centralized documentation that we update weekly or monthly, both with new A-frame layouts, which you can also request in the comments. As well as with mood boards or materials or technical execution systems, types of structure or foundations. So we recommend you to make sure that you follow the latest updated version and at the same time if you consider our work useful, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Layout design is the first chapter with which we recommend you start when approaching such a project. It is very important to establish the footprint of the A-frame, this being influenced by the available land, as well as by the view you want to frame. Also at this stage it is important to establish the number of floors. If you have a sloping land, you can opt for a smaller number of floors, even on the ground floor. If the configuration of the land does not allow you to obtain an excellent view, you can put the construction on stilts or you can opt for a larger number of floors. Usually, in the case of an A-frame with several floors, the living area, the living room, the kitchen and the dining area should be on the ground floor and the evening area on the mezzanine or on the first or second floor, depending on the needs. Guide in 10 steps to be able to design and build an A-frame represents a centralized base of information so that you can approach such a project. A project that can be do-it-yourself if you have basic information about constructions and can be executed even and the beneficiary, if you have the necessary time and patience and of course if the steps in the guide are followed. We recommend that you patiently follow all the 10 steps in which we have centralized the information, if you do not have time to go through it, it is better to follow it when you have time, because we have summarized all the information in both the design and execution stages, as you will see in the next few minutes, we will talk in parallel about both the design and the frame house that we executed and based on which we thought about this video. It is important to watch both the video and the audio documentation available in the background at the same time, many details being presented only in audio, in an attempt to summarize the information as best as possible. I have presented in step 1 some very important slides in which you have percentage calculated both the heating and cooling volumes depending on the angle of the roof, as well as all the percentage of the useful space resulting in the section. You will have to be patient to go through this information, it is very merged in the respective slides, but they are important if you want to build in a frame that is efficient from several points of view, not just in a frame that shows good. The presented layouts are informative, we will update the information as we design other A-frames, therefore we recommend you to make sure that you follow the latest version of the guide, which we intend to update weekly or monthly. A-frame on the ground floor and mezzanine, the execution costs would be lower, especially if you will not have the bathroom on the first floor. Such a configuration of an A-frame fits a couple and can be done at low cost, as well as an A-frame designed only on the ground floor. If you need one or more bedrooms, another budget is clearly needed, practical bathrooms on the floor or floors, having a significant impact on the execution cost. Another criterion that we recommend you take into account is the angle of the roof which has a massive impact on the usable space inside. Here we are talking about a very important compromise to keep in mind. On the one hand, if you opt for a reduced angle, you will have to increase the section of the structural elements, as the loads from the snow will increase. If you opt for a large or very large angle, you will gain useful space, preferably on the upper floors, but, on the one hand, it will be more difficult to execute, and on the other hand, the volume will increase, both useful and less useful, from the upper part of the A-frame, which will have an impact in maintenance and maintenance, but also in cooling or heating costs, considering that warm air rises in the upper part. We recommend an angle of 60 degrees, for several reasons, this being a perfect one, both for structural reasons, as well as for execution and compromise between the resolved usable space, interior volume, and budget.
Step 2. Framing Design In this chapter we will detail the types of structure you can use. Considering that we are in a seismic zone, we mainly use wooden structures, those in clamps, as they have a very good behavior in case of an earthquake in the cross section. In the longitudinal axis, we use a mixed system of panels and horizontal beams to stiffen the structure in this direction and at the same time to create our thermal insulation support. In the example presented, both as a project and as an execution, in the following minutes you will be able to see the executed house, you can see how we managed to perfectly integrate these structural requirements in the thermal insulation layers of the construction, to reduce costs by a part and at the same time to ensure that we do not have thermal or acoustic bridges with the outside. In order to answer your requests, please leave us comments both about the information centralized in the guide and some other layout requests, or if you have questions or want more details. In the future update versions, we will come with more technical execution details, both as they look in the project phase and as they are seen in reality. Step 3. Infrastructure Design In this chapter we will present you how to optimally integrate the electrical, sanitary, thermal, and HVAC installations so that technical space is not lost, there are no thermal bridges with the outside, there are no acoustic points both with the exterior as well as between floors or between rooms of the same level. Regarding the exhaust of dirty air, we have proposed and implemented an exhaust solution to the outside, through the floor so as not to create thermal bridges with the outside. In the last chapter, step 10, you will see the system already executed, not only at the design level, as I presented it in this chapter, but we recommend you to patiently go through all 10 chapters, because all the installations, thermal insulation, and structure are thought and designed as a unitary whole and if you skip a chapter, you can neglect certain criteria or reasons for which we propose different design solutions. At the same time, we invite you to leave us in the comments any observations or opinions, questions, or conclusions you have, precisely to improve this guide, which we want to perfect so that it is as useful as possible for those who are passionate about A-frame houses. Step 4. Interior Design This chapter is related to Chapter 2, in which we presented the advantages and disadvantages of the angles between the floor and the beams and also the color, the interior finishes being somewhat personal and should represent the style of the owner. However, we recommend you to use samples of materials and to consider the lighting, which has a very important impact on the overall image of the interiors. We will detail this chapter even more in subsequent updates. We intend to develop interior libraries for both the living area and the bedrooms. Next, we present libraries with A-frames design, both from the outside and from the inside. We also present the library for the bathrooms, and we will update the libraries for the other rooms in the next videos. So don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and activate the alert button to receive notifications as soon as we update this guide. Regarding the interior design, we recommend that you first of all choose a style that you can apply in all the rooms, pay attention to the mix of natural and artificial light, the lighting fixtures being divided into two large categories, lighting fixtures ambient and directional light fixtures. In Chapter 9 we will detail where and when each of these categories of lighting fixtures is used. We also have to take into account the way we use the finishes both for the floor and for the exterior walls, as well as for the walls under the roof. For the last two, 
a vapor barrier is absolutely necessary so as to avoid the formation of humidity and later mold behind the finishes. To check the correct installation of the interior finishes in relation to the thermo system up to the exterior finish, we recommend you to use the Abacus website, as we will present in detail in Chapter 6, Roofing and Insulation. With regard to bathrooms, you can opt for both wet finishes and ceramic cladding, preferably ceramic bodies of the largest possible size to have as few joints as possible, these represent risks of infiltration. Another material that is increasingly used is an epoxy resin that has exceptional waterproofing properties and ensures very good sealing of the joints between the floor and the partition walls. More execution details will be presented in the following chapters, that's why we come back with the recommendation to go through all the chapters to receive all our advice and recommendations. Even if the complete guide is long, the information is synthesized and related to the previous and following chapters. If you don't have time to go through all the documentation, we recommend you save the video and study it when you have time. Step 5. Foundations. This chapter is a lighter one because the foundation of a building depends a lot on the positioning of the A-frame, whether we are talking about a slope or the type of foundation soil. However, what we can summarize is, on the one hand, the need to use waterproofing, as the transmission of moisture in the wooden structure can cause quite serious problems. Another thing to keep in mind is isolation from rodents. As you can see in the chapters of build, in which we present not only the design but also the execution of an A-frame, you can see how we achieve the 360 rodent isolation of an A-frame. Step 6. Roofing and insulations as well as Step 7. Facades. These two chapters, as we presented in the design chapters, we recommend you follow them together because from the design we have optimized both the execution and the maximization of the thermal insulation efficiency by arranging it horizontally and vertically in four layers of mineral wool. At the same time, we recommend you to use Bilka sheet or similar, which you order in the exact size of the frame. Any horizontal joint in the roof area represents a risk area for infiltration. As you can see in the presentation video of a frame, we use standardized elements both on the roof and in the closing area from the soffits of the facades or even in the closing of the opaque areas in the facade. We will return in the following videos with more many execution details, including for the facade, which you can copy or adapt to your project. Since all the information in the complete guide designing a frame is synthesized and updated weekly and monthly, please make sure you follow the latest updated guide that you can find by searching our YouTube channel. We are also waiting for your comments regarding this chapter or if you want other information or technical execution details as well as other A-frame layouts that we do our best to in design order to as have soon as possible, and sound insulation, will also be added it is not later enough in the guide, to have 30, in 40, one of update or 50 versions. centimeters of insulation, but the way it is arranged is also important. In order to avoid thermal bridges and sound bridges from the inside to the outside, as can be seen in 3D, we used a mix of layers with a layout of the insulation in a thickness of 10 cm vertically and horizontally. At the same time, after arranging the thermal insulation layers, it is important to use the anti-wind barrier foil. In this sense the way in which you arrange the wooden core of the structure on which the board is mounted is also important. The water from the condensation must be able to drain uninterrupted on the anti-wind barrier, under the sheet, therefore the grid must end with horizontal elements. Regarding the insulation of the floor, as can be seen both in the video from the site and in the 3D simulations made before execution, we used mineral wool between the structure and a layer of XPS polystyrene, continuously, precisely to ensure that we break the thermal bridges in the floor, and which is very useful as a support layer of the floor. You can also see here the simulation that I talked about in the previous chapters in which I superimposed material layers to check the vapor pressure, the humidity level and the risk of mold on the site ubakus.de as you can see, there is zero risk of mold, but it is important to insulate all the joints, as you can see in the video in this chapter. 
We used aluminium insulating tape, and in the next update we will return with details and manufacturers of such materials. Step 7. Facades. As I mentioned in the previous chapter, the facades go hand in hand with the roof and insulation system, as there must be a correlation between the heat transfer coefficient determined from the thermo system of the roof and that of the facade, respectively of the carpentry. I did the simulation on you because and as can be seen in the previous article in which I detailed the thermal insulation of the rafters, I obtained a coefficient around 0.2 kilowatts. Therefore the carpentry should have a heat transfer coefficient as low as possible in order not to the temperature is lost in the carpentry area. It would not make sense to use a high quality thermal insulation of the roofs and lose the temperature in the carpentry area or the facade. As can be seen in the previous chapter, the quality of the insulation can be tested and confirmed by the fact that the snow does not melt, not even a single snowflake. Which means that the temperature is not lost at all from the inside to the outside. This is beneficial both in winter, when the temperature inside is kept, and in summer, when heat will not enter through thermal bridges from the outside to the inside. Step 8. Interior Finishings. In this chapter we present the finishes that we used in the built a frame. We used MDF panels that we attached to the lamellar wood structure that we preferred to use in plain sight, so that we could have the LED strip as a support. We intentionally kept the lamellar wood structure visible so that we can fix the MDF panels from the outside to the inside and at the same time masking the joints between the MDF panels with the help of the structure. The floor finish was made of laminated parquet, using XPS polystyrene as the starting support. Step 9. Lightning. The LED strip mounted in the lamellar wood structure system is a backlight to generate a pleasant ambient light. At the same time, this is also supported by a directional light in the living room area and a lamp in the bedroom area. We will come back in an update with more details on the types of lamps and where they are recommended to be used. Step 10. Heating and Ventilations. The heating system you can choose depends on the location of the frame. If the winters are very cold, we recommend you to have a good quality thermal insulation. We opted to heat with electric CO and V actors because the constructed frame is very well thermally insulated. Plus, another advantage is given by the fact that it can be set remotely or programmed so that the temperature is optimal when you get home. Programming is done by connecting wirelessly to the router just like the air conditioning system. At the same time, we also recommend a decentralized heat recovery system, which can also be programmed wirelessly. Having practical control over the air conditioning system on your own phone. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive all new posts, including those where we update the information presented in this video. Each subscribe and like helps us to constantly update and improve our technical documentation.